ยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมสวัสดีครับขอต้อนรับทุกท่านเข้าสู่รายการ f a c t e x p o i n t มวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมพบกันทุกวันเสาร์ตั้งแต่10โมงเช้าถึงเที่ยงวันทางช่อง7 HD ครับวันนี้ครับท่านผู้ชมครับมีทั้งหมด7คู่ที่จะขึ้นมาชกบนเวทีนี้ครับจะเป็นมวย3ยกทั้งหมดรับรองความมันไปตลอด2ชั่วโมงนี้นะครับกับนักมวยจากประเทศเนปาลอิหร่านลาวสหรัฐอเมริกาและแน่นอนครับจากประเทศไทยอีกด้วยคู่เองในวันนี้ครับจะเป็นคู่ที่6อารอนซากนจากสหรัฐอเมริกาปะทะอับดุลลาห์อานิจากประเทศอิหร่านในพิกัดน้ำหนัก667กิโลกรัมและวันนี้นะครับใครที่ชนะด้วยน็อกจะได้รับโบนัสจาก f a i r t e c h Equipment 10,000 บาทครับ Ladies and gentlemen, we have a total of seven bouts lined up for you. All exciting three rounds of Muay Thai action with fighters from Nepal, Iran, Laos, the United States of America, and of course Thailand. Of the seven fights, our main event will be the sixth fight. Aaron Zakhan from the United States of America takes on Abdullah Anish from Iran at 67 kilograms. Also, any fighter winning today by knockout will get a bonus from Fairtex equipment of 10,000 baht. For those of you who would like to listen to commentary in English, you can do so by changing the language on your remote on Channel 7 HD or tune into our YouTube channel at Fairtex Fight. สำหรับท่านใดที่อยากจะชมออนไลน์นะครับเรามี2ช่องทางด้วยกันครับช่อง t e r o Digital และช่อง Fairtex Fight ทาง YouTube, Facebook และ TikTok ครับเราจะพักกันสักครู่กลับมากับคู่เปิดเวทีครับจะเป็นมวยไทยพิกัดน้ำหนัก70กิโลกรัมนักมวยจากประเทศอิหร่านประทะนักมวยจากประเทศเนปาล We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with our opening bout in Muay Thai at 70 kilograms A fighter from Iran takes on a fighter from Nepal Don't go anywhere Fairtex Fight มวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมมาที่ FedEx Fight มวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมที่จากเมืองเลเจนดี่ลุมปินีสเตเดียมไลฟ์ออนช่อง7 HD คู่แรกในวันนี้นะครับจะชกภายใต้กติกามวยไทยพิกัดน้ำหนัก70กิโลกรัม Our opening bout Let's bring out the fighter in the black corner Yunus Family Muay Thai Hello world and welcome to l u m p i n i Stadium for another exciting day of Fairtex fight. Opening our show today, we have Yunus family Muay Thai from Iran, 
The 18-year-old stands at 172 centimeters, 49 bouts to his career, 41 wins, eight losses. Today's show, of course, brought to you by Channel 7 HD and Tarot Entertainment, our official partners, along with our sponsors, Ute Sport Gear and Samo T. I I am Matt Lucas, and sitting next to me is... Andrew Parnham, and thank you for having me on tonight. Yeah. Great oh. to be ringside here today. I'm very, very excited for this lineup today. We have athletes from Nepal, Iran, Thailand, and the USA all battling it out over three three-minute rounds. The cut men here just applying the last bit of equipment and Vaseline to the athletes. There's Steve Mack, a boxing trainer. All of our cut men, former fighters, I believe. A lot of the ring officials and the stadium staff, former athletes themselves. So we turn it over to our MC, Mark Abbott. In the red corner, let's bring out Rupak Nepali. Walking into the ring now, Rupak Nepali, the 28 year old, standing at 175 centimeters, 15 bouts to his record, 14 wins, one loss. Rupak been training out Fairtex Training Center for about the last month or so. His trainer Cow there just removing the Nepalese flag. Don't really see that many Nepalese athletes out here in Thailand. I believe he might be the third athlete. Do you see many Nepalese fighters out in Australia? Not at all. This is the first time I've seen one, and I guess it's a sign that Muay Thai truly is global these days, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing a real influx of uh, Iranian athletes. A lot, almost every show, yeah. every weekend, you'll see at least, you know, one, sometimes up to half the card, you know. Mm. Yeah, a lot of the Iranian athletes coming from the Middle East have a big kickboxing background. So we'll see how things get on as we turn things over to our MC, Mark Abbott. ผู้ชมครับคู่แรกในวันนี้จะชกกันภายใต้กติกามวยไทยพิกัดน้ำหนัก 70 kg 3 ยกยกละ 3 นาที The opening bout is in Muay Thai at 70 kg scheduled for 3 3 minute rounds นักมวยในมุมดำ fighting in the black corner น้ำหนัก 70 kg สูง 172 weighing in at 70 kg standing 172 cm tall มาจากประเทศอิหร่าน From Iran This is Yunus Family Muay Thai แล้วคู่ต่อสู้ของเขาในมุมแดง And his opponent Fighting in the red corner น้ำหนัก 70 kg สูง 175 Weighing in at 70 kg Standing 175 cm tall มาจากประเทศนีปาน from Nepal, this is Rufak Nepali! And your referee, Nayamon Chai Wisungle. Here we go with the tail of the tape. Rupak Nepali from Nepal versus Yunus Family Muay Thai. So truly international bout. Nepal versus Iran. Referee giving the fighters their final instructions. Uh, the Nepalese boxer is jacked, actually. Look at the physique on him. Um, got a, the young fellow from Iran, 18 years old. He carries the most experience for this bout. He'll go into round number one. And we'll see how that experience plays out. Ooh, strong leg kick to start off the bow. Maybe with the hands as well. It definitely has an intimidating stature. 
Boys exchange jab for jab there. Right yeah. kick comes back to the right hand, taking on the block. Yeah. Left kick down the right hand as the boys go to the bench now. Yeah. Not a lot of action and the athletes are pressed up against the ropes. So the referee will be quick to break them up. And Rupak, I think smart tactics here, trying to chop at the leg. That lead leg of Nunes is a little long and pretty easy to hit. It's a slip. Looked like he might have gotten a little dazed there. Eunice breathing heavily. It's only halfway through the round. Nice left oh. kick there. Yeah. Goes almost right up into the liver. Sneaking below that guard. Yeah, another left kick there from Rupal. I think Rupak is feeling more confident now. And, well, Eunice has a bit more experience. They're about even in skill level. And again, another leg kick. A little bit of a tomp from Eunice. I'm not sure that's the best of tactics. You see Eunice stepping forward a bit with that lead leg. There, there's the leg kick again. Ooh, and that blistering left body kick. Those left kicks are definitely going to take their toll, aren't they? He's rocking it down. There's a big left body shot there from the opposing boy coming back now, digging deep for the last 10 seconds of round number one. Very, very nice opening round for today's bout. So we go back to the corner. The athletes getting a one minute break between rounds. And Andrew, as a former fighter and coach out in Sydney, Australia, what do you think you'd be telling Eunice right now? Uh, Eunice at the moment, he really needs to make sure he's protecting himself against that left kick. That left kick from uh, Rupak is really coming in hard at the moment. So. Uh, he's got to start to use his hands a little bit more. Uh, in the cringe, he seems to be blocking everything and, and not really doing a whole lot. It's only a short fight, so he, he needs to get to work now. Because that first round, he might have let that one slip by. Yeah, I totally agree with you. We'll see how he changes gears, potentially, going into the second round. Do you think that the left kicks of Rupak scored very well? And also some of the leg kicks probably slowing down Eunice. The athletes just getting a minute break, so it's not that much time to dilly dally. Yeah, well, one minute breaks make it up, that's for sure. Here we go, round number two. The referee telling the boys to pick it up a little bit, knowing that's round number two of a three round fight. Calling for the action. Yeah. Uh, kick for kick. And again, Rupak slipping in that left body kick. Oh. Into a bit of a war there. Just feel like Rupak's physique is in enable him to take a bit more damage. So he looks that way, but uh, I'll tell you what, but, uh, Venus definitely got a, a chin on him. He took quite like a champ just before. And again, counting at that lead leg, Rupak. 
to you to body. Body, 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 body. And you hear the corner calling for that left kick to the body. It's eventually going to find its home. Oh, a little bit of uh, 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 a little special move there. If uh, the athlete is touching the ground, you're not allowed to uh, strike them. And again, the corner calling for that body shot. That left body kick that worked so well in the first round. Oh, there's the left body kick. Now we're certainly with the Nepalese fighter at the moment. Beautifully timed left hook there. I spoke too soon, Matt. You did indeed. Rupak dropped. It looks like he has a focus back, but we'll see how he goes. His legs may be a little unstable here. Yeah, he's definitely on wobbly legs still. Beautiful combinations from the Iranian fighter. Going low, high, going low. Mixing it up, keeping it hard. like the body shot might gas him up. He's still on wobbly legs here. Borrowed time potentially. Oh, there's the left body kick. Things are heating up here in the second round. Can Rupak finish out this round? Oh, more hard shots to the head. You don't want to be keeping your hands uh, down. <laughs> Excellent sweep to buy himself some time there. The last few seconds here of the second round. And there we have it. Action packs round number two there, Matt. I did speak, I speak too soon there. That hand coming through beautifully. Catch it on the replays we come through. Yeah, we'll get to see that knockdown in the replays. Rupak was, I felt, controlling that second round. Otherwise, that left kick coming in well. Big overhand right. But Eunice able to land with some crisp boxing. And there's that cheeky punch. It was that, oh, that left hook. You almost see the mouth guard go flying out. Just as he was about as trying to land a leg kick in the can. Here we go, trying to finish him off, but no luck there, but massive right hand to follow. Some big body shots as we come into round number three. So going into this final round, what do you think you would be telling Rupa? It's all or nothing this round, but he definitely needs to use his corner and get that left kick back in. Otherwise, we'll see you finish here in the third match. Mm. I do think Rupak has a chance here. A lot of Vaseline on that right eye as well. Oh, bam! I think that's it. Oh. That's a good night. But yeah. Perfect finish there. Yeah. Big knockout win for Eunice in our first bout of the day. Very, very excited athlete there. One happy corner. I think that might even be a head fighter non big yet not good. Perhaps there. Giving his fighter a high five. Beautiful finish. There it is. That overhand right. Good sportsmanship after. Here's the replay though. Bang, bang. And boom. Folded like a chair. So we turn it over to Mark Abbott and he will be getting the 10,000 bot bonus. Ladies and gentlemen, in round number three, we have a winner by knockout. In the black corner, Eunice Family Muay Thai. 
้และขอเรียนเชิญนายสนามพลตรีสจาสุขสุเมฆผู้อำนวยการศูนย์พัฒนากีฬากองทัพบ,บกบวยไทยลุมพินีมามอบโบนัสเมเจอร์เจนโรสจาสุขสุเมฆ giving the bonus from b a t e x equipment of 10,000 บาทด้วยครับได้รับโบนัส 10,000 บาทด้วยครับจาก Fairtex Equipment What an explosive way to get things started here at Fairtex Fight มวยมันพัน Extreme เราจะพักกันสักครู่กลับมาคู่ต่อไปครับเป็นคู่มวยหญิงนะครับพิกัดน้ำหนัก52กิโลกรัม Join us after the break with some more Muay Thai action in the female 52 kilogram division To FedEx Fight, Moi Man Pan Extreme here at the iconic Lumpini Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand. Time now, guys. First, Unis Family Moi Thai Chana Nok in the Yok Thi San. Now, we got a reward from FedEx Equipment, 10,000 baht. That's our first fight down with Unis Family Moi Thai picking up that 10,000 baht knockout bonus from FedEx Equipment. We now move on to the second bout of the day. In the black corner, let's bring out Nong Min Tho Song Kiet. So walking into the ring now for our second bout of the red day and our first female bout, Nong Min Tho Song Kiet, the 17-year-old standing at 160 centimeters, 30 bouts to her record, 19 wins, 11 losses. Her last few fights, a Points win over Bube Mokcho Yang Tong. A points loss to Gengao Pet Pai Lak. And a points loss to Tapagao So Gen Jan Chai. So, an increasing number of female athletes here at Lumpini. Of course, we had last night, we had. Petty Ja versus Anissa Mexin at one Lumpini. There you see the corner man just tying up the gloves. I believe there was a little bit of rope, laces sticking out. Our professional cut man team working hard. Again, you see Steve Mack there applying Vaseline to the brow area both above and below the eyes. It's where most of the cuts will occur. So we turn it over to Mark Abbott. And in the red corner, let's bring out Yali Paul Petpilun. And in the red corner, we have Yali Paul Petpilun. The 17-year-old standing at 162 centimeters, 25 bouts to her record, 20 wins, four losses, one draw. Her last few fights, a points win over Rungnapa, Sun Gila, a points win over Ken Non, Ma Ma Yim, and a points a knockout win over. 
พิลาดาแกวทองสวัสดีพิลาดาพอสิทธิ์สตรีคิร์ฟอร์เยลีแต่แกน่ารักผู้หญิงแอทลีตส์เข้ามาที่เฟร์เท็กซ์ไฟท์ให้มีโอกาสเปิดโอกาสให้ผู้หญิงแอทลีตส์ที่อยู่ที่ทั่วโลกและทั่วโลกและเราเปิดโอกาสให้ผู้หญิงแอทลีตส์ที่อยู่ที่ทั่วโลกและทั่วโลกและเราเปิดโอกาสให้ผู้หญิงแอทลีตส์ที่อยู่ที่ทั่วโลกและทั่วโลกและเราเปิดโอกาสให้ผู้หญิงแอทลีตส์ที่อยู่ที่ทั่วโลกและทั่วโลกและเราเปิดโอกาสให้ผู้หญิงแอทลีตส์ที่อยู่ที่ทั่วโลกและทั่วโลกและเราเปิดโอกาสให้ผู้หญิงแอทลีตส์ที่อยู่ที่ทั่วโลกและทั่วโลกและเราเปิดโอกาสให้ผู้หญิงแอทลีตส์ที่อยู่ที่ทั่วโลกและทั่วโลกและเราเปิดโอกาสให้ผู้หญิงแอทลีตส์ที่อยู่ที่ทั่วโลกและทั่วโลกและเรา Yoke the Sam Nati. This is a Muay Thai bout at 52 kilograms, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Nam Muay Nai Mum Nam fighting in the black corner. Nam Nak 52 kilograms, 160. Weighing in at 52 kilograms, standing 160 centimeters tall. Ma Jak Prathet Thai from Thailand. This is Nong Min Tho Song Kia. แล้วคู่ต่อสู้ของเขาในมุมแดง and her opponent fighting in the red corner น้ำหนัก52กิโลกรัมสูง162 weighing in at 52 k i l o g r a m standing 162 centimeters tall มาจากประเทศไทย also from Thailand this is เยลีพอเพชรปิรุน And your referee พันโทหญิงนีชาพรเนียมโชติคุณ Here we go with the tail of the tape. Yelly poor pet Perin versus Nong Min poor Song Kiet. So this one at 52 kilos, a very very common weight class for female athletes now. Most of the female athletes. Between 52 to 57 kilos out here in Thailand, a growing number a little below as well. Of female athletes fighting at 48 to 52 kilos as well. Both of these women very young in their careers, 17 years old. So I assume they will probably fill out a bit more. And nice start to the action already. Big left knee in the right corner. Walking right into that cross. And a great platform here for the athletes as well. A lot of the athletes will move on to the road to one tournament or up into one Lumpini. Fairtex by a big scouting ground for the athletes. You can still see some of the confetti from like last night's show raining down on the athletes. Ooh, nice right cross there from the red corner. I tell you that red has landed a couple of massive knees. There's another big one as she stabs it through. Can it really test the conditioning here? Again, that walking knee has her hands a bit open as she steps in. Really starting to just reaches out with both hands as she walks in. Oh, nice right knee there. Definitely dominating the clinch exchanges so far, the red corner. Oh, nice catch and body cross there from Nong Mi in the red. Oh. Yelly putting on some hard hands that's nice retaliation from the blue corner only 30 seconds left red corner's corner telling her to walk forward and as she does she's listening to her corner well as we get into the last 10 seconds of the round big right knees there 
Bit. Kind of just gave out on it then. Yeah. I'm a little surprised I wasn't considered a knockdown. It just looked like some of the knees were really starting to damage her. And we go into the corner here. Just a minute break, so I don't think the blue corner is really going to be able to recover that well. I think she's going to have a hard time coming out into the second round as we take a look into some of the action from the, sec uh, the first round here. The girls exchange big right kicks. There's that step up knee there from the red corner, coming back with the blue. The ladies exchange hand combinations. But I think the defining factor was some of the moves in the clinch, especially the body shots. The red corner there. Dong Min just really putting it on Yelly. Going into the second round, I think she's got to really do her best to try and take some angles off to the side to get away or use a hand to push across the face to stop her from locking onto her neck because I think this round is a big round for the red corner. Maybe try and come and finish her off in this round, Matt. Yeah, I don't... My crystal ball says this one will end a bit early. Not a big right knee there. Oh, oh and that's it. Yelly scoring with the big knee. Nong Ming getting back to her feet, but that's not a good sign when the first shot sends you to the ground. Yelly walking in here like diesel noise. There she goes, going like a bat out of hell. Here we go. Hanging on for dear life in the blue corner. Trying to prevent the inevitable, Matt. Yeah, I think it's a matter of time. Oof. But you saw very smart work there from Nong Min, grabbing the lower body, the lower back. He's trying to bring up the knee block. Yeah. Just too quick there in the crease, too busy. Knee after knee, not giving her enough time to get that knee up to block her. Yeah, Yelly smells blood in the water as well. Making space for that knee. Keeps attacking the body as well. There again is the body lock from Nong Min. Just trying to stall and somehow recover. Oh, getting manhandled there. Another big left kick on her way in, using that as her way to get into the clinch. Big right elbow there from the blue corner, copying another couple of right knees for her troubles there. The referee calls the girls back to action. Just over a minute left in the second round. Blue corner doing her best to stay away and prevent that from happening. Here we go, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, and you can see her looking up at the clock as well. I think she's looking for another break. Oh, the posture is just bent over. Wouldn't be surprised if it's called yeah. early. Yeah, there we go. Good call there for yeah. the referee. No, no need for unnecessary damage for the athletes. It was pretty clear that Yelly in the red corner was dominating the fight. The athletes can live on to see another day. There's that big right kick and uh, opening stanza of the second round. Took the wind right out of us. Bit of a delayed reaction and she just realized it then. Beautiful performance there from the red corner. We wait for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, in round number two, the referee has called a stop to this bout. For your winner, by technical knockout, 
in the red corner, Yeli Paul Pet Pirun. And Korean Chen Nai Sanam Pon Tri Satcha Suk Sumek. ผู้มีการศูนย์พัฒนากีฬากองทัพบ,บกมวยไทยลุมพีนีมามอบโบนัสจากเฟเทคซิควิปเมนต์หนึ่งมืนบาท Congratulations เยลีพอเพชรพิรุณ picking up that 10,000 บาท knockout bonus from เฟเทคซิควิปเมนต์เราจะพักกันสักครู่กลับมากับคู่ต่อไปครับเป็นมวยไทยพิกัดน้ำหนัก51กิโลกรัมนักมวยจากประเทศลาวปะทะนักมวยจากประเทศไทย Join us after the break with some more Muay Thai action 51 k g A fighter from Lao takes on a fighter from Thailand Fair Tech's fight Muay Man Pan Extreme Gentlemen, welcome back to Fetix Fight Moi Man Pan Extreme here from the world famous Lumbini Stadium. Pam, we have two first unit family Moi Thai champion knock in the first round. And the second unit, Yeli Po Pet Pirun, champion knock in the second round. Both unit got a bonus from Fetix Equipment, 1,000 baht. We now move on to the third bout of the day. Let's bring out the fighter in the black corner, Petajak Mongkon Pet. So here we go into our third bout of the day. Will we continue this knockout streak? And the fighter from Lao, Pet Takak, Mong Kong Pet, the 18 year old stands at 166 centimeters, 22 bouts to his record, 17 wins, four losses, one draw. So a lot of the Laotian fighters coming to us regularly. They tend to be a little wild in terms of technique, but always a ton of heart. Muay Thai, of course, very, very popular around Southeast Asia. Number of athletes coming to us from Laos, Cambodia, Myanmar. We've got Malaysia now. We've got some Malaysia. Oh, yeah. There's the Rent Tap boys from Malaysia. Jojo Rent Tap, who's pretty famous. He fought maybe a month ago over at One Lumpini. He actually, I believe he started or he started here at Fairtex fight about a year and a half ago. Built his name up and was picked up by one Lumpini. Showing it's a nice pathway through to the big, to the big dance. The, uh, it's good to see these guys coming in at such a young age, getting the exposure. And in the well. red corner, let's bring out Yod Kun Pon Singh Kong Si. And here we have coming in to the red corner, Fighting out of Thailand, Yod Kun Pon, Siri Kong Si. Only 15 years of age, tall than 170 centimeters, having a 53 fight record with 31, 31 wins, 19 losses, and three draws. 18 year old versus a 15 year old. This is shaping up to be a real cracker of a bout. 
and Young Kun Pong's last few fights, a points win over Api Chat, uh, Tespan Kao Bang Blit, a TKO loss to Git Sak Luke Mel, and a points win over Pet Lat Pum, Luke Kao Pong Kum Gan. Having a TKO bonus, I think today the bank accounts might get uh, a little bit thinner. Two in a <laughs> row, Matt. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how we go here. Of course, both of these athletes very young and very hungry. This is a Muay Thai bout at 51 kilograms, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Fighting in the black corner. Namnak 51 kilogram sung Roy Hoxip Hok. Weighing in at 51 kilograms, standing 166 centimeters tall. Maja Pratet Lao. From Laos, this is Petachak Mong Kon Pe. Lakudo Sukong Hau Nay Mum Nang. And his opponent. Fighting in the right corner, Namnak Hasik eight kilograms on Roy Jetzip. Weighing in at 51 kilograms, standing 170 centimeters tall. Majak Prathai from Thailand. This is Yod Kun Pon Sing Kong Si. And your referee, Nawakat Eglan Hong Mi Sili. Here we go with the tail of the tip, Yad Kun Pan, Sing Kom Siri, Kom Si versus Peta Chak Mong Kong Pet. Thailand versus Lao, a pretty classic matchup as we see the taller Yad Kun Pan from Thailand taking on the shorter Laotian athlete and Southpaw versus Orthodox. Makes for a beautiful kicking batch here as we start round number one. Both boys exchanging heavy kicks. The Lao boy exchanging some big low kicks and a big oh. right head kick comes through there, taking on the forearms. What? Oh. Calling for more weapons to be thrown. Wants more action from the start from the fellas. There we go. Oh. Nice little takedown as he loses some footing oh. on the way through. I think both of these athletes are getting off to a pretty what? What? quick start. Oh, nice body shot there oh. from Petachak. Just a softening up the midsection. Oh, I love the catch and counter with the body shot. We saw a nice stoppage last night with one of those on the one and two, man. And heavy hands here from the Laotian athlete in the blue. Taken down again from the Thai corner. Smart work from him, though. Staying close in range to Yakun Pong. Ooh, I think the stomach is getting a bit soft from Yakun Pong. Looked like he was wincing like he just oh. ate some bad some tum. <laughs> Another, one. Another one in, you can see the hands dropping. Looks like he feels more comfortable in the clinch here. Or on the outside, it's definitely going to the Lao boy who's working down low. Oh, another one. As he returns his own two, three big knees, four big knees. That one just coming on the cup. Five knees left going around the outside. They both exchange now on the inside. Uh, nice stabbing knee before the referee breaks him up. Yeah, that last knee right up the middle scored well, but we'll see if the Laotian athlete is able to punch into that body because, man, Yod Kumpon was really wincing. Nice little lean back there. <laughs> the exchange it was big overhand left there. Here we go into the clinch again. And nice knees here from the taller Yad Kupon. Really utilizing his leverage. <laughs> oh, and excellent. See, just to keep that range. 
action slowed down a little bit now. Those opening minute of exchanges may have tired the boys out a little bit. For the final 20 seconds of round number one. Now Kumpan doing a good job with his positioning there. Just getting off the side to still score the knees, but also able to protect his body. So a great first round of action. How do you have that one going? Uh, well, it was, it was you know, uh, Peter Chuck from Laos came out really quick and was landing some big body shots as we spoke about earlier on, wincing in pain, but Joachim Point really in the second half of that round went to work with some big long knees. Um, I think in the second round here he's going to be really try hard to walk forward and, and prevent those big hands and leg kicks from uh, Petr Jack from Laos in the blue corner. So we see some of the action there in that replays here. Big body shots there. Really exposing himself to elbows. I'm surprised. Um, <laughs> well, you can see the, the reason why he didn't throw any elbows to counter was he was hurt. But, uh, he looked like he was about to spew. <laughs> There's some big knees that we spoke about. Finding some nice angles in there too as we get ready seconds out for round number two. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So two uh, potentially three rounds here, but let's see if this one will oh. go the distance. Oh. No doubt the promotions team are uh, steady there, counting their pennies, waiting to see if we get another 10,000 baht bonus. This is a big right kick there. The bonus coming to the athletes by way of Fairtex equipment. So any of the knockouts, we've already given two out of the three fights. <laughs> So Surveying that leg kick nicely. Yoku Pong just waiting, stalking. Oh, great Eight shots. Yeah. Punches on his way through. Again, trying to go upstairs with his boxing. Oh, I think that last body shot made him wince again. Doing the right thing to try and get in close and stay away from those. But also does a good job to stop. And the referee breaks the guys up. Get ready for more action. Yeah, good way to reset the exchange, just clinch up. A lot of times the referees will break the clinch pretty quick here. Shopping at that inside leg. One might have lost a little bit of steam. Yeah, I think so. He's sort of inching forward, I think trying to get back into the clinch. Good blocks here from Petachak. Another right body rip up. Yodkumpong hanging off him, putting all his weight in, hopefully trying to take a little bit of the power out of those body shots as Yutajak goes up high this time. Cops a big right hand, gives a left hand over the top. Big exchanges in the corner. Yodkumpong getting to work, but not enough action, says the referee as he breaks the fighters and brings them back. Yeah, again, you, we're seeing Yadkun Pan come forward, but he's just leaning on to Petata. Take downs like that certainly take the gas out of you as well. It don't necessarily score though. Just show some secondary signs of dominance, but doesn't necessarily do damage, which is the highest scoring factor in the, in the fight. Oh, beautiful uppercut cross there. Big shout out to everybody watching from around the world. I know a few people over in Sydney and Brisbane have dialed in to watch us, so big shout out to you guys and even over in the Philippines. Uh, good to see that people are watching from all around the world. And the show getting very, very popular in this USA and around two. Of course, here in Thailand, as we see a number of athletes from around the world perform. So going into this final round, 
What do you think you'd be telling Yakun Pog in the blue corner? Well, he, he's got to really make sure that if he's jumping into to play the inside game in the clinch, that he's got to get some action happening or the referee's going to break it up. Uh, whether that means pushing across the face and clinching long or uh, just trying to drag the opponent off the ropes into the center more because, well, they're over the ropes and getting tangled. doesn't look pretty in the, you know, in the judge's eyes and the referee tries to break them up. Uh, saying that, Petr Juk's doing a really good job of, you know, throwing some hands and, and really trying to keep him away and, and even smothering that clinch too. So um, we're in for a really interesting third and final round. Yeah, and Petr Juk, very heavy with the hands. Maybe it's the Spartex gloves though. Rumor has it they're, they're a little harder than some of the other brands. <laughs> so I hear. They look beautiful. And a big thank you to Fairtex for having me on board today, Matt. <laughs> Yeah, always great to have international talent. For those of you out there in internet land, uh, Parnam is a renowned trainer and gym owner from Sydney. And Petatak really utilizing these Fairtex gloves. Yad Kunpan again getting back into the clinch. He, some of his facial expressions, Yachtunpan, make it look like he's not really enjoying himself that much. Absolutely, that might be one of the things he needs to work on for yeah. his next match. <laughs> not showing pain is super important. He's just looking like he ate too much Vegemite. <laughs> that spoiled look on his face. <laughs> Big left kick there from the loud boy. Big change kicks. Got Puddin on getting pushed up to the ropes now. Oh, a nice right kick there from the forearm. A little bit of red man, another right kick. Maybe that was the game plan all along, man. We switched it up. <laughs> Again, Yad Kunpan looking up at the clock here. Petachak just looking a bit more confident and focused, spinning around with that back fist. The Sydney special, as we call it. Oh, oh big shots there. Yogun Pond's doing better on the outside with that right kick. Keeping at range and not risking popping shots like that is. They go body shot for body shot, one with the fist, one with the leg. Beautiful Muay Thai here, Matt. Yeah, I totally agree with you, Andrew. Speaking of beautiful Muay Thai, big shout out to Sai and, and the crew down there in Victoria. Yeah, our friends over in Australia doing a lot for the sport. Shows like Roots and Rebellion really growing the sport internationally. I'm sure. Our friend Sai watching with interest to see what sort of talent he can bring out to Australia. We get into the final 30 seconds of the last round. Pat Tatak looking for that 10,000 baht bonus. Shifty little entry into the clincher as he, he feints into the right kick and stepped right in there and just locked in. But hey, at the moment he's actually getting done on in the inside too. The clock about to wind down and we'll go to the judges scorecard get to see some of the replaces your unofficial scorecard Andrew how do you have this one looking it's a real tricky one Matt I, uh, you know those big hands early on Although to the body and making him wince in pain, he was copping some big knees early on too, which didn't look real good in the scorecard. But as you can see, some very crisp Fairtex glove work there. <laughs> uh, we looked into the third round. We saw Yogurt Pond landing some big kicks. Uh, but even in the final stanza, we, you know, uh, the Chuck was really even going to work on the inside. So I wouldn't like to be a judge as we wait for the final decision. Hopefully the judges aren't coming from some backwards place like Canberra. 
Just Ladies filthy. and gentlemen, after the completion of all three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored this fight 29-28. For the winner, in the red corner, your Kun Bon Sing Kong Si. Yor Kun Bon picking up the win there on points after three rounds. Join us after the break with some more Muay Thai action at 60 kilograms. Vertex Fight, Muay Man Pan Extreme. ไฟเทคไฟท์มวยมันพันเอ็กซ์ตรีมเฮียไลฟ์ออนชาแนลเซเว่นเอชดีไทม์แล้วครับสามคู่คู่ที่หนึ่งยูนิสแฟมิลี
with shows like Fairtex Fight. There's also, of course, One Lumpini, which we've frequently talked about. Other shows here at the venue as well. Thank you so much for this one. We will show you the top of the top. Muay Thai, which is 60 kg, 3 yok. Yok is 3 nats. This is a Muay Thai bout at 60 kg. Scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Nak Muay Thai Mum Nam. Fighting in the black corner. Nam Nak 60 kg, 170 kg. Weighing in at 60 kilograms, standing 170 centimeters tall. Majak Pratetai from Thailand. This is Sende Lukrom Luang. Lakudo Sukong Kao Nei Mundang. And his opponent fighting in the red corner. Namna Poksip Kilogram Sung Roy Jet Zip. Weighing in at 60 kilograms, standing 170 centimeters tall. Majak Pratetai from Thailand. This is Petsi Nin Do Kong In. And your referee, Jasip Tri Anukun Tam Si Lam. Here we go with the tail of the tip. Petsi Nin Do Kong In, in versus Zendet Luklom Luang. Van uh, club pulling up looked like it might have been a military vehicle. So, uh, judging by the hairstyle too, could well be a local uh, military man or even a police officer. Yeah, a number of athletes in Muay Thai coming from military backgrounds. A lot of the police stations uh, will have will support local boxing gyms, the military will have camps as well. I believe Superbon has fought for the military before. The, some very good athletes from the Navy as well. And we go for our next tie on tie bout. Action picking up early, both guys throwing their weapons with full effect. I love the athletes know that now at least uh, at shows like Fairtex Fight, the geared more towards entertainment, you have to get going right from the opening bell. And the red corner here, very, very fast start. That elbow just missing. Circles off nicely back into the center of Red Tito himself. Left kick just missing. Big right kick coming through. A good defensive maneuver so far from the blue corner. Right shots to the body there, two in a row from the red. Would say that Red has been more effective with his aggression and damage so far, though. Oh, some sharp leg kicks, though, from the blue corner. Love time to see athletes that are moving forward. They're not necessarily doing damage. It's something that is very much a factor in scoring. You have to be doing damage. Just moving forward doesn't count. Two big leg kicks there from either guys. 50 seconds to go here in our opening bout for our fourth bout of the day. Three more bouts lined up, including our main event, Aaron Zakin. Versus an athlete from Iran, so USA versus Iran. Oh. Oh, nice right kick there. Luke Warner really, uh, his weapon of choice has been the left kick and knee. Whereas in the red corner, coming out early with some hands, trying to land that big money shot to get the 10K in the bank. Good way to start the weekend. Maybe even the New Year celebrations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. There we go, as the boys exchange hand combos coming into the final 10 seconds of the round. Oh, oof. Big punches from both athletes. End of round one. 
There's the end of the first round of action, and on your unofficial scorecard, Andrew, how do you have that one looking? It's a close one. I, I do feel like, uh, even though the red corner is moving forward, constantly just trying to close the gap and, and let rip with his hands. Uh, blue corner was doing a real good job of just edging backwards, using his teeth, trying to score with that left kick, and, and up the teeth, trying to use it, some little feints to try and land that big uh, little elbow. Uh, as we can see some of the exchanges there from the guys. Blue corner definitely the bigger man coming into this fight as well. As you can see him just missing that elbow there. Quite crafty in the way that he's defending himself as he kind of draws his opponent back onto the ropes. So we go into the second round of action here. Here we go, round number two of the fourth bout for today. Yeah. Left kick to open the round. Another left kick there. Uppercut elbow on the way through, just Jack keeping distance using his lead hand. Another left kick there. Yeah, very, very smart counter work here from the blue corner now. Kick the glitter off him. <laughs> yeah, some of the celebration from last night's main event, Taiwan Tai versus Super Bond, still falling on the athletes. A little bit of prolonged glory. Definitely the dream of many athletes to get to the level of Taiwan Tai and Super Bond, fighting for hundreds of dollars. Hundreds of thousands of U.S. dollars. Yeah. 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 Catching him every time he's coming through. Yeah, great timing oh. from the blue corner. Ooh. And excellent. I really like the hand controls as well. Very nice, constantly yeah. hand to jab and push and fend and parry. Control the action. Yeah. Trouble there, though. <laughs> Body shots, trying to slow him down a little bit there, but there he comes trying in for that one. Follows up with a big left kick there. Nice right oh. kick there. Some of the hands from the red corner finding their mark. Just tacking him up a little bit. Pushes away to get more space. Pops a little knee there from the red corner. Oh. oh, good left kick. Oh. Showing some experience there, putting his weight on the fire on the ropes to try and tire him out a little bit, being a bigger boxer. As he pushes him away. Left hook under the gloves. Teeth again failed. Nice left kick there from Red. Into that kick now. Bit of a sway in the action. Not much power in the counters though. Both boys showing a little bit of fatigue. There's that right hand over the top. Ooh, beautiful left body kick there from the red corner. Who's, I feel picking up some steam. But just 10 seconds left here in the second round. Again, kicking the arms. Oh, and a little bit of a cheeky shot there to the downed opponent. Didn't connect with it, but enough of a warning. Yep. Actually, a sign of dominance. And, you know, as we said at the start of the round, Blue looked like he was coming out all guns blazing, but a massive finish there from Red. And that final uh, stanza was just the, the sign of dominance that he needed to, and what I feel would have been a, a red round. So some of the replays here. The very effective countering from the blue corner to start off the fight. Send that. 
but then Petsy Nin coming in strong, especially in the last 20, 30 seconds or so. Going to the third and final round as the referee calls seconds down. Could be looking at one apiece in a deciding third round here. So again, there's some of the hand controls from the blue corner. Trying to push out of the clinch as well. Very, very determined though. As he continues to inch forward, stabbing knee there from him. Red corner really starting to take flight now. Keeping away, trying to push the fighter back, and there we have it. Um, it's actually saying that now all odds are over to the red corner. Uh, grabbing the back like that is a real show of domination. It's like a prison mat. <laughs> And cops a punch for his troubles there. Yeah, rocking back the head of that. Just halfway through this last round. That low lock, a little bit of a stalling maneuver there from the red corner. Has been doing a good job with his entries. Big shots there from Sandel. The two fighters slowed down a little bit. The referee gang in the rear. Boys just stalling out. Um, um, 40 odd seconds left. Referee calling for action. No dancing in this business. Yeah, you only have three minutes in three rounds. It's not a lot of time to stall and dilly dally. Red Corner takes a bit of a look up the clock there, trying to see if he can dance his way to victory, keeping his distance on the ropes. Made a beautiful left kick there, trying to seal the deal. Second half, 10 seconds left, waiting for that left kick, there it is. Blue Corner. Oh, excellent controls there from the Red Corner. There you have it, Matt. Beautiful display of Muay Thai there from the red corner, biding his time, slowly but surely being patient, waiting for opportunities. Seize the day. And we'll see if he's able to seize some points victory. We'll turn it over to our MC Mark Abbott in just a minute. In the meantime, some of the replays. The red corner. Petsin in coming forward. Effective counters from Sandap. Then this is as the tide of the fight turned. Petsin in started to control the game a bit more. A bit more defensive. Ladies and gentlemen, after the completion of all three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score this about 29-28. 29, 28. 
for the winner. In the red corner, Petin in the Kong in. Another fantastic bout there, ladies and gentlemen. That is four fights down. We still have three more to go. Chung Na, Pop Kapu, Ta Pai, Club. Muay Thai, Big Gun, Nam Nak, 65 kilogram. Nak Muay Jak, Brathet Lao, and Nak Muay Jak, Brathet Iran. After the break, join us with a fighter from Lao and a fighter from Iran at 65 kilograms. Don't go anywhere. Gentlemen, welcome back to Fairtex Fight Moi Man Pan Extreme here from the world famous Lumpini Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand. Pam Lok Hub, see who song who wreck me knock, son con kuti sam, let kuti see go crop yok. Yalim the hubwa cry teach and I do knock na one need today. Rap bonus jack Fairtex equipment. Ning moon bad crap. We now move on to the fifth bout of the day. Let's bring out the fight in the black corner, Soleiman Abasi. Here we go into our fifth bout of the day. We have seven bouts lined up. Soleiman Abasi, the 31-year-old from Iran, standing at 177 centimeters, 25 bouts to his record, 14 wins, 11 losses. So we already had an Iranian athlete on the card today. The very heavy-handed Yunus from Family Muay Thai knocking out Rupak. Preparation. There are Kaman Paco, former fighter himself, fought out in New York and in San Francisco too, I believe. And Steve Mack as well. Be very happy to be here and ready to go. Red 
corner. Let's bring out Pet Anong Mongkon Pet. As we take a look at our next fighter, Pet Anong Mongkon Pet from Laos. Only 19 years of age, weighing at 65 kilograms and 175 centimeters. He's had 27 fights with 21 wins, five losses, and one draw. Iran versus Laos. Makes his way over the ropes. Little young pup, but as we saw earlier on. Tan, ผู้ชมครับคู่นี้คู่ที่5จะโชว์กันภายใต้กติกามวยไทยพิกัดน้ำหนัก65กิโลกรัม3ยกยกละ3นาที This is a Muay Thai bout at 65 kilograms, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. นักมวยในมุมดำ fighting in the black corner. น้ำหนัก65กิโลกรัมสูง177 Weighing in at 65 กิโลกรัม Standing 177 centimeters tall มาจากประเทศอิหร่าน From Iran This is Solomon Abbasi แล้วคู่ต่อสู้ของเขาในมุมแดง And his opponent Fighting in the right corner, number 65 kilograms, so 175. Weighing in at 65 kilograms, standing 175 centimeters tall. Majak Pratet Lao. From Laos, this is Pet Anong Mong Khon Pet. And your referee, Sibay Kichada Pontu. Here we have the Tilde Tipong Petadong Mong Kong Pet versus Suleiman Abbasi. Lao versus Iran. And we'll see how this one cracks on. Fifth bell of the day, and of course, I'm Matt Lucas commentating alongside of Andrew Potom, sitting in Australia. Happy to be here. Yeah, I'm very happy to have you. Solomon uh, really looking at by the looks of it before, throwing some big hands, calling shots, a little bit awkward in the way he's standing. Oh, oh throw down and he his way through, shows a bit of frustration and smacking the glass. We yeah. love that, man. We love yeah. that. <laughs> He's definitely geared up to go, Solomon. Can be a little bit of a sign of frustration, also hyping yourself up when you smash the gloves together. Too, sometimes for the Thai fighters trying to deal with the bouncing and the whole thing. Different style to what they used to too, so it can go either way. Yeah, we have that big right hand coming down the pipe there. Jack coming back there from Panamon. The boys exchange heavy leather, brought to you by Fairtex. Yeah, some of the rhythm of Solomon is a bit awkward. I think Petanong is still trying to sort it out. Stick stab there from Petanong. Cracked him with that right hand. Another slap. Oh, he's, he's, oh. Oh. A few air swings there from both 
fellas. Betting on doing well off the jab. He sticks to the jab and tries to use that to find his winner. And might be able to land a couple of kicks to get things moving. Blind right hand. Persian boy being on the yeah, it's switching ready. stances already, like you said. That leg is definitely open for that leg kick. There's a little bit of reddening on that front leg already. Petanong only landed that one. So he didn't like it. He enjoyed getting that leg kick out of his too, but he really yeah, felt that one. It's turning into a boxing match here. Neither athlete really There's a body kick too soon, perhaps. And there's the end of the first round of action. So going into the second round, what would you be telling Pekinong? Because guys like Suleiman are so unorthodox and a little bit jittery. Very, very hard to try and get your rhythm against someone like that. But like I said before, I think the jab's working well for me. Uh, don't throw any blind right hands. Uh, we have seen them a mile away. So just using that jab, keep it simple. Using the jab to set up that little bit of uh, that one leg kick. We really did not like that. And you know, a couple more of those, and I think uh, he might see himself a little New Year's Eve gift. So again, some heavy leather being thrown in that second round. Three falling seconds out before he's getting ready to lie down on their mouth guards and get deep for a big second round. Round yeah, two. And there's that awkward rhythm from Solomon right off the go. Might well have done some taekwondo or something in this time. Oh, there we have it. The fellas trading hard there in the middle. And Solomon catching a right, big right hand. Nice left kick there. Coming up high and smacking right on the guard. There's Solomon doubting that taunting or talking to him. Not sure Petanon would know what he's saying. That's your potion. <laughs> not so good. Uh, here he is, the right hand over the top. Gets the right one in himself. The inside leg kick is peppering away there. Not doing a whole lot of damage. That's oh. A Scissor kick and right hand. Yeah. Well, that was some action from Pentagon for sure. Loading up that right hand. There it is. Jab down the middle, working nicely. Yeah, he, he pulls him in. He wants to see more. I feel like Pentagon is trying, but Solomon is backing away from the engagement all the time. Leg kick. Leg kick. Oh, the left one flicking up there from him as well. And the left kick there from the tie boy. So slowly backing him up into the corner. It's yeah. the right thing to do. There's that uh, there's an elbow coming through the middle. I do think Petanong is chasing him and could be cutting the ring a bit more effectively. Yeah. So I'm on getting backed up to the ropes here, but then you see, oh, whack. Big Sean Petanong all over him. I think he shocked himself. Yeah. He didn't know what to do. Solomon looking very, very wobbly here. Really, like you said, man, uh, Petanong's really got to cut him off. Oh. He lands a big right. Oh, oh that's oh, a flying <laughs> team. <laughs> got to do a better job of cutting him off. He's just running around in circles. But there we go. Big right kick caught. No counter from Suleiman. Big gulp of air. He does. Oh, almost clashing hits as they go into the clinch and the referee breaks it up. Yeah, Suleiman definitely on 
Perhaps borrowed time here. A slight kick there from Pizzanong. Just a few seconds left, I think. Oh, go! Oh! <laughs> He's looking for that flying kick. Uh, <laughs> he wants an Instagram highlight of knockout here. Yeah, he sort of looks like he's had a bit of a pain so before he comes down. He's delivering those one, twos, and three oh, piece oh. combos, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, a very big round there for Petanong in the red corner. We'll get to see some of the action in just a moment. So we'll take a look back at the action replays. The fighters exchange heavy hands. Solomon coming off the, the second of the two. Big right elbow just falling off balance. Another scissor kick and a right hand as he backs Solomon up into the corner. There's that beautiful right head kick there. And I think he thought that the ref was going to count him, but he didn't fall. So play on. There it is. Beautifully timed right off the cheek. Foot wrapped around the neck. If he had a flower around that ear, Matty, that flower would have been got sent back up into the crowd who we got here today at the famous Lumpini Stadium. Here we go in the third or final round. Will Petanong get a tasty little New Year's Eve bonus or will we go to the distance? Yeah, mostly knockdowns can take a lot out of a fighter's cell, so we'll see if Solomon is able to dig deep and get his heart back together, come back, do some damage. Superman punch there from Pentanon. I think he's letting him off for those. He should be sending one straight back. Oh, and, yeah. and that leg is bashed up. Little shimmy shimmy. R.I.P. O.D.B. Oh, big right hand. Pentanong looking for the kill here. Beautiful catch there from the inside officials as they knock the sponsorship boards over the top. The referee brings the boys back into the center. A big right hand just missing its mark. A little bit of blood on there. What have we got? I think it's a matter of time here. Pitanong has plenty of it. Sulman just running away here from Pitanong. Lands a nice right hand. Nice right kick there. Nice and strong. Some boys exchange leather in the middle. Again, I think the major problem here is just Pentanong hasn't really learned how to cut off the ring. I think if he had uh, knew how to do that, it would be a much shorter fight. Oh, a big lot of blood coming. Oh, bashed up left that wide open for him. Couldn't find the mark though. One tough cookie. Oh, big up elbow there. Tough as nails. How is he still standing? Covering in legs, covering in body, covering oh. in mouth. Oh. Is this it? Backed up leg. Oh, too fast. Needs to cut him off. Corner is screaming. 45 seconds left. I think you might be able to see the end of the round. But pretty clear which way this fight is going to go. Let him off again. A little bit of Muhammad Ali style. Loving right hand, just single shots. Oh, wait for the final 10 seconds. Oh, again, Can rock them. Oh. 
มอจงที่สายยกสุดท้าย Too busy looking for the uh, the big kibosh, as our old friend would say, in that right hand. Feel like he could have done a better job of cutting him off and and looking for that big kick, but uh, unfortunately it wasn't to be. And the purse will have to be enough for him today. Is that Superman punch? Some real big, heavy shots. As Solomon was tied in that later round, mouth wide open, gasping for air. As we can see that big one now, finishing off with either a kick or a knee afterwards could have really done the damage. But uh, I think maybe a lack of experience might have uh, prevented him from winning that one by a KO and getting the 10k from Fairtex. And also that Solomon was super tough. Ladies and gentlemen, after the completion of all three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges scored this bout 30-27. Sam s i b u s i v j e t Sam s i b u s i v j e t Let Sam s i b u s i v j e t for the winner in the red corner. Pet Anong Mong k o n p e Another fantastic. Bout here at f a t i x Fight m o i Man Pan Extreme. เราจะพักกันสักครู่กลับมากับคู่เอกของเราในวันนี้ครับ Aaron z a k o n จากสหรัฐอเมริกาปะทะ Abdullah Anis จากประเทศอิหร่านในพิกัดน้ำหนัก67กิโลกรัม Join us after the break for our main event as Aaron z a k o n from the United States of America takes on Abdullah Anis from Iran at 67 k i l o g r a m See you then. Welcome back to f e t e x Fight Moi Man Pan Extreme here live from Lumpini Stadium in Bangkok, Thailand on Channel 7 HD. For those of you just joining us, you are in time for our main event. สำหรับท่านไหนที่เพิ่งมานะครับคุณมาทันคู่เอกของเราแล้วในวันนี้นะครับ In the black corner, let's bring out Aaron Zakon. Here we go into our main event of the day. American Aaron z a k o n walking into the ring. The 28-year-old standing at 174 centimeters, 26 bouts to his record, 16 wins, 10 losses. So Aaron, a regular figure here at f a i r t e x Pipe, but recently in Upcountry show about a month ago, won that fight by knockout. Dismantling his opponent quickly and easily. What a great birthday! April 6, 1995, 28 years of age. Good drop, anyone. Shout out to everyone who's bought out. April 6. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Aaron, have you seen Aaron in the gym? You hard worker. Yeah, he's been working hard. He's been out at Fairtex for about the last two years. Oh wow! I I brought him down to his. First fight in Phuket about two years ago. His wife Maggie v i m o n a regular fighter as well. An 
And again, the tape just going over the laces that were peeking out. The laces are outside of the glove. You can use them to lacerate your opponent. Just use the glove on your opponent's face and cause additional abrasions. It's considered bad sportsmanship outside of the rules. The Fairtex team very much official and looking to up the level of standards around the world. So we turn it over to Mark Abbott. And in the right corner, let's bring out Abdullah Anish. Here we have, fighting out of MTA Muay Thai in Bangkok, Abdallah Aniz from Iran, 29 years of age, weighed in at 67 kilograms, 185 centimeters. He's had 18 fights with 10 wins and six losses and two draws. And in Abula's corner is Sua Black, who fought last night, knocking out Craig Coakley. I believe the first or second round, a big body shot. Sua Black getting a one championship contract. Massive body shot. I think that's the one after the catch. He took it right in the solar plexus. Down he went. So uh, let's see, this is the third Iranian on the night. So big shout out to anyone, any of the Iranians watching. I know there's a lot of uh, Persians throughout Thailand, obviously fighting, but also out here uh, working and holidaying too. So hope you're out here watching and, and supporting your boy. This is the main event. Kuwait in this day will show you the Muay Thai. The weight is 67 kg, 3 yoke. The yoke is 3 hours. A Muay Thai bout at 67 kg, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. The Muay Thai Mumdam fighting in the black corner. The weight is 67 kg, 174 kg. Weighing in at 67 kilograms, standing 174 centimeters tall. Majak Saharat America. From the United States of America, this is Aaron Zakon! And his opponent fighting in the right corner. Weighing in at 67 kilograms, standing 185 centimeters tall. Majak Rathet Iran. From Iran, this is Abdullah Anis. And your referee, Naibul Lerk Gelbidak. Significant height advantage going by way of Abdullah from Iran as he comes up against Aaron Zakin from America. Matt, it's, uh, it's great to see so many Americans now making the trip over and, you know, putting in the hard yards over here and then also bringing that back in return to America and improving the quality of Muay Thai in America. Yeah, we totally agree with you. The, you know, at, coming from Australia, you know how long and how deep the roots are. You know, the... You yourself, you you lived out here for six or seven years, correct? It's just under five, but yeah, five. either way, you yep. was, yeah, it's, it makes a massive difference. Yeah. Yeah. And most Americans have not lived out here that long, but Aaron Zakin, two years, it's one of the longer running Americans out here in Thailand now. The American chopping at the legs of Abula. Hey, back to back too smart and uh, Aaron, sorry, too smart and chopping at the legs there, Aaron. Missing long knees there from the Iranian. Again, Abula using that range very effectively. 
It's definitely going to be a hard one for Zaka. Good lock there from Zaka. A bit heavy with it. Not an awful lot of knees, but the posture was strong. Oh, big hook there. But an excellent body kick from the Bula. Oh, the body shots. Paying off, I think, early from Zaka. He has that boxer's build to him as well. There's excellent block here from Abula. You see Zaka moving his hips forward to prevent the space. Abula doing a good job utilizing his height. It looks to be an advantage on the inside as well. Aaron leaning back nicely, evading the kick. That's two in a row as he comes back and fires with a couple of hands. Yeah, not quite making their mark yet. Oh, big one shot. Up elbow there. Obviously, the range can be a massive issue for Zakin. Oh, beautiful left body kicks from Abula. I think it hurt that arm of Zaka. Didn't take some of the sting out of that right punch. Oh, that was a beautiful name. I think that hurt Zaka. The American turning his back. Having to dig deep here. Last few seconds. Took the full brunt of that knee, all the inertia off the ropes and everything, but hey, he's tough. He looks yeah, like he's coming back. Yeah, stoic looking face there on Zakam, but I think he was about to spew. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see it potentially in the replays. Zakin had some beautiful body shots. Here's the early extinctus. Abula can be tough for anyone at this weight to fight. There's that long knee. At 185 centimeters and 67 kilograms, or six foot one plus in the old language. Uh, it's gonna be a hard night for anybody. Uh, but oh, that's a that beautiful that knee. knee. Just timing, just whipped it up there right in the solar plexus. Ouch. Yeah, you see, there's our DJ Sanook always bringing a lot of life and energy to the show. Hello, you hello, see hello, his hello. trainer Chow and telling him to hello. move forward. Here we go for round number two. Oh! The referee calls box on. There it is. Oh, but there, there it is. And yeah. you saw Zakat push him down a little bit, too. The hands from Aaron. We spoke about it early on in the physique, and there he is with the comeback. Let's see if he can finish him off, and here we go. Oh, he's on wobbly legs here. Abula. Zakin, Scott, be careful. Oh, there's the right hand. He's holding on for dear life. Can Zakin find the bun? Can he find the off switch? Abula, definitely in trouble. Massive posture taking there from Zakin. Got that hand tucked right up on the chin there. He doesn't want to make a mistake. He has trying to take the lead now. There's a left kick, three left kicks, mm. four now in the round. So close to a counter. Oh, big one, too. Trying to land with that elbow. Oh, big elbows from Abula. They're hitting the guard, but still not so nice. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of a cut on the brow there. Oh, big elbows there. Oh, big knees. Yeah. Abula has recovered. 
Can Aaron find that right hand again, though? He's shooting for it, for sure. Big elbow. there from Zaka. Oh, excellent elbow from him. Oh, left kick coming in from Zaka. Not sure I would want being in this sort of situation with Abula. This sort of lock. Easily tossed to the ground there. Oh, up elbow there from Zaka. Left kick doing some work there from the Iranian boy. And he's, open, he's got a gate mouth open, grasping for air. Crazy round. And round two. Obviously, a big round for Zaka to start off with. Scoring with that right hand, dropping a bula. We'll get to see it in the replay, no doubt. Bam, there it is. He jumped right back, but then Aaron landed it again. And that time he, or the second time, oh, big elbow. Four right hands from Saka. Abula started to open up with the elbows, though. So it should be a very interesting third and final round. There you see Xiao, Aaron's trainer, telling him to hit the body. And here we go for the third and final round. Can Aaron's hands do the damage against the big left kick and knees? Abula coming out. Oh, massive knee there from Abula. Abula coming out very, very strong here. I think he knows he might be behind on the scorecard. Oh, deep to the face. Again, going for the face. I think this is a real test for Zaka. Oh, again. He's doing a great job getting the back of Abula all the time. Not necessarily scoring with that, but it does show, oh, some dominance. Body shot there from Zaka. The American taking some hard shots here now. Oh, up, uppercut from Zaka. Again, big shot there. Abdullah's left side is doing a fantastic job. Using that left kick nicely, using his range. That's interesting for someone who's actually good, what seems to be good on the inside, constantly turning his back. Yeah. I'm really interested to see how that's going to work play out with the changes at the end of this round. Yeah, that took a oh, massive knee there. This length is very, very difficult to deal with. Zach is really showing a lot of stoicism here. Big left kicks coming in, and ones and twos and threes. Short leg kick there from Zaka. Oh, big elbow as well. Zaka having to dig deep for this last 50 seconds. As Abula has more or less had his way here. Ooh, massive knee again. Zakin, oh, again, Zakin basically getting the back. 
Oh. Yeah. Oh. Chopping elbow from Abula. Chopping oh. a big left body kick. Zaki calling him on. I'm not sure that's a good idea. Not again on the top of the head. And again, getting the back. It's, you know, it's not necessarily doing damage, but it's showing dominance. I think Zach is feeling he's starting up to take the win. Just a couple of nice little cuts for his uh, efforts today. Is it enough to take the win? A big round in the second, third round. Although he was eating a lot of shots, as you can see here, um, the way he was giving up his posture multiple times, was almost every time they entered in, but, uh, um, into the clinch that so he'd finished by giving up his back as a way of surrendering or wanting the referee to break, which really isn't the way to go. Um, you can see that massive left knee on the way through, big right elbow over the top. That may have been the one that cut him. Referees hand in their cards and we await the official scorecard. Vertex Fight, Wayman Pan Extreme. After the completion of all three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. All three judges score this bout 28-27. For the winner, in the red corner, Abdullah Anish. Fantastic main event there, ladies and gentlemen. อย่าลืมว่าเรามีอีกหนึ่งคู่ที่จะถ่ายทอดสดอีกสักครู่ทางออนไลน์นะครับทาง YouTube Facebook และ TikTok ช่อง Tero Digital และช่อง Fairtex Fight Don't forget we still have one more bout coming your way in just a moment online on Tero Digital on Facebook and YouTube as well as Fairtex Fight also on Facebook and YouTube Before we go I'd like to thank our sponsors Chong Jet HD Tero Entertainment Fairtex Sanamuilumbini, Le Yut Sports Gear. Ladies and gentlemen, Channel 7 HD from me, Mark Ab, the team here, Fairtex, Lumpini Stadium, Channel 7 HD. So what do you crap? Fairtex fight, Wayman Pan Extreme.